Hello, my name is Selena. And my name is Theoni, and you are listening to Piping Hot. Hello, everyone. It has been a week. A, a oh, couple weeks, actually. <laughs> it has been a couple weeks. I just want to start off by saying, I know the three of you really missed us, <laughs> um, but we took a little week break. Mm-hmm. I had some like health stuff going on. Yeah. I'm an overshare sometimes, so I'm just going to not say more, yeah. but... I decided to take the week off, which Selena was very gracious about, and we're back and better than ever. Actually, I'm not totally better yet, but we're working on it. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I'm trying. Sometimes we just need to take a break to, you know, take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was more than happy to do so. Yeah, I have this habit, even some of like the, like my bosses at work were like, Theoni, just like take care like relax yeah I'm like okay like I just don't know when to like stop yeah like you you like don't want to let anyone down so it's like yes. you keep pushing yourself even though like you yourself aren't at a hundred percent but you're like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and it's yeah. hard to be reminded that like no wait you do matter and you can take that time and space exactly so yeah. that's my life <laughs> anyways <laughs> how was your week overall it was good November has been like a crazy month for me, but I'm blaming mm. it because it's like, it's like Scorpio season. So I'm like, mm. oh, that's why. That's why. You're right. <laughs> Selena's an old woman, you guys. She's 25. <laughs> uh, I just know. kidding. <laughs> I know. I, it was my birthday the first mm. weekend of November. And it's funny because like Jack kept telling me, he's like, the second you hit 25, like you won't be able to get up and your body will hurt and blah, blah, blah. I was like, you're dumb. <laughs> like... <laughs> Has your body started hurting? Like, are you? No, I'm doing, I'm doing good, actually. Okay, I'm proud of you. Like, I'm glad to hear you haven't started deteriorating. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, me neither, really. Yeah. It's only been a couple of days since I turned 25. (laughs) We went to a Timberwolves Bucks game. Yeah, you guys were like courtside. Yeah, we were like the row behind courtside. And it was like life changing. <laughs> was it so fun? Like it I was, was so jealous. It was so much fun. And it's so funny because like obviously Timberwolves are playing at home, but like half the arena was like Bucks fans. And it was like really awkward because it's like wow. I was cheering for the Bucks, but everyone around me was like was... Timberwolves fans. And so I was like, mm. oh, this seems a little awkward. Obviously, we won. The Bucks did. Um, which was amazing. Um, my boy Yanni, what up? Yeah, no. I oh love my gosh. that man. We were like literally less than like 10 feet away from him. He I would is, cry. He's gorgeous up close, Theoni. Okay. He is gorgeous. It's funny because he's I... He's probably sweaty, <laughs> like it's, doing his thing. <laughs> it's so funny because... Well, I was looking at his arms because, like, you know, I'm I'm like an arms girl. Like, Jason Tatum has, like, really nice arms. Giannis has really nice arms. Well, I was admiring his arms and his just all his muscles. Jack was looking at his butt. And I'm like, you know, we have our priorities, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the male gaze versus the female really? gaze, okay? Yes, really. <laughs> it was so funny because I was like, oh, my God, look at his arms. Look at his muscles. And Jack's like, look at his ass. <laughs> And I was like, that too. <laughs> yeah, that too, honestly. Like, there's there's a lot to look at. <laughs> really? He has a lot to offer. <laughs> yes, he does. So, <laughs> but it was so much fun. I, I oh, haven't good. I haven't gone to a NBA game since the last one I went with you in Boston. Oh, yeah. So it was just nice to be, like, in an arena again and in that energy. Yeah, definitely. I actually went to a Celtics game the other week and because nice. my roommate got like free box seats from her school and so we got to go sit up there. Honestly, I've decided that for like concerts, sports games, I like being in the crowd. Like I don't care if I'm freaking up on the ceiling. Like I like <laughs> being in the crowd and like having the energy. I yeah. just feel like it makes it so much more intense. You oh, know? yeah, definitely. We had like I, our seats, if I remember correctly, was like in line with the the hoop. And so mm-hmm. we couldn't really see them when they were like close to the hoop. But I, I will say our section was like so lit. Like everyone yes. was so and fun. And we got the little prize. Yes, <laughs> the prize that was like, oh, let me spin the wheel. And yeah. Let's see what section it lands on. And it was like pre-planned. Yeah, like, it was okay, like, oh, you guys off, already won. Yeah, <laughs> okay. literally. Okay, go off, I guess. But yeah, no, that was that was really fun. What are you reading, watching, consuming? 
Oh my god. And you need to update me. <laughs> okay, so consuming, I just had some Cheetos earlier. Uh, <laughs> uh, reading, I just finished um, Wicked Beauty, which is the third book in the Neon Gods trilogy. Is that with the throuple? Yes. Ooh. Thoughts? I think I've decided I'm not a throuple person. Oh my god. You know how we talked about, like, the joining? Yes. How that wasn't enough a detail. Yes. <laughs> this one solved that problem in spades multiple times. Oh, my gosh. But it was, like, too much. Yeah. It was, like, too much to think about. I was like, I mean, to each their own. I just can't. <laughs> I, I can't wrap my brain around that. Maybe it's because I'm too jealous of a person. Like, I just, like, cannot share mm. somebody like that. Got it. But they're like, she balances us up perfectly and we're all in love with the... I'm like, ah! <laughs> like, I don't get it! But, like, go yeah. off. But, like, it was a lot. There was a lot. I don't even know what to say about it, truly. It, it was, like, not bad because uh-huh. I kind of liked it. Like, the plot was actually pretty good. Okay. But <sighs> that shit is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, like... The joining was, like, on one side of the spectrum where it's, like, it wasn't enough. But then this one was, like, way on the other side of the spectrum that it was, like, too much. And so now you need a book that's, like, in the yeah, middle. Okay. Exactly. But okay. here's the thing. I will say I feel like it wasn't even too much. It was just too much for me. But I feel like objectively for, like, a oh. threesome seat, it was not not bad you know what i mean got it okay okay that makes sense i just think i've decided that that's a lot (laughs) for me personally like i just can't and apparently her next book is like a foursome oh gosh Uh, are you gonna read it but i don't know i have to okay but like she said something because i followed her on like instagram or whatever and apparently she said it's not like polyamorous it's like because they don't all have sex with each other but they're like still in like a a couple oh that's interesting i'm uninformed these books are informing me i'm learning it's an educational experience for sure you are growing (laughs) it's called character development we love to see it the one thing i will say having two hot men's attention on me i don't know if i would say no to that (laughs) so like like, on a base level never pass it up yeah yeah literally any, yeah. Are you watching Any, anything? I finished Never Have I Ever recently, which that show is oh. actually so good. Yeah. Um, I've been watching The Kardashians, trying to catch up. Um, I've Same. been watching Grey's Anatomy. That's kind of my vibe. I am pissed about Grey's Anatomy, though, because Meredith is leaving the show, and they're yeah. going to just continue it. Have you gotten to the episodes where she's leaving? Or are you no, getting so close? she's leaving the episode in February. So they like teased it in the last episode. And so then the show's going to come back in February. And then that's going to be like her farewell episode. And then. But she's oh. literally leaving the show. How can they you have know what? the show without her? I'm pissed. I know. I'm you know what? They, pissed. <laughs> they probably did that because they want to keep the viewers still to return to um when they air in February and then like keep whoever stays as the season goes on. But they but should I agree. not have, then what is, whose yeah. anatomy is it? Cause it's not Grey's anymore. Like yeah. I don't understand. That may, that's just pissing me off. I know. I, I agree. I hate when TV shows continue without the main character. Cause it's like, what are you doing? Like your, your main character, your yeah. main motive, your main problem is gone. Why do you think you can continue? Yes. Exactly. Like start a new show. <laughs> Lit- literally, make a spinoff for Lord's sake. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Okay. What are you consuming, reading, watching, listening to? Um, consuming. I had a protein shake for lunch as well as a yogurt. <laughs> okay. Well, show me up. I'm like, I had Cheetos, and you're like, I had a yogurt and a protein shake. Like, I'll go fuck myself now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, if I had Cheetos in the house, I would 100% eat the entire bag. So oh I don't I don't blame you for snacking on that. The worst part is I'm a little... No, I'm not going to go on a tangent because I asked you a question. This is about you. You continue because... Okay, thanks. Oh, my God. You're cracking me up. Um, okay. I, Friday, I finished reading 
Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim, which is a young adult fantasy, and it was Ooh. so good. It was okay. so good. Like I was, I was so impressed. I was like, oh, okay, okay I see it. Um, and the second book, because it's a duology, the second book just came out, so I might pick up that, or I might just jump to another one of my books on my bookshelf. But yeah, that was, it was really, really good. And then watching, I'm also watching The Kardashians on Hulu. And then I'm also watching season two of Fate, The Wink Saga. And it's actually really good. Like season two is so many steps above season one. And I'm Mm. so pissed that they canceled it. Yeah, Netflix has a habit of doing that where they'll renew the shows that no one's ever heard of, I swear, but yeah. then cancel ones that just start getting hype. I'm I like, know. how are you doing this? Like, really? Why? Like, like, you can tell that, like, season one was really rocky. Like, mm-hmm. they didn't really know what they were doing. Like, the the uh, makeup, the outfits, the acting mm. was kind of, like, a little janky. But season two, whoever they hired to come on, or, or maybe they got a bigger budget for season two, yeah. it is so good. That's what I mean. It's just, like, give them a second to find their footing and, like... Yes! So that's unfortunate that it gets I know. But that frees up Abigail Cohen to I be know. Lily in the movie. <laughs> it, does. it does. And I I really, really need her to be Lily and it ends with us. Like it can't be anyone else. She has the perfect look. Yes. And she's young like Lily. Like she yeah. looks the right age for Lily. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll Crossing see. my fingers. <gasps> um, but that's, I think that's it for me. Nice. Yeah. What are you drinking today? Today, I'm drinking peppermint tea. I was just, like, looking for something that was, like, familiar and, like, cozy. So I was like, peppermint is the way. Nice. Yeah. What about you? So I have to FaceTime you after we're done recording because (laughs) I, like, finally organized, like, all my stuff because now that the mice are gone out of our freaking cabinets, (laughs) we're able to put food in them again. So we, like, organize it, put food in like one thing and then my drink stuff in another so Mm -hmm. I have like I bought these little containers and I organized all my teas and I bought some new ones to fill it up so today I'm drinking honey chai turmeric vitality shit something (laughs) it's by yogi I don't know I haven't tasted it so let's oh okay live tasting it's earthy oh (laughs) okay I honestly feel like I would like this if I added a little more of like honey of my own. Got like, it. Okay. Because I didn't add any additional, but yeah. like I think it's good. It's nice. not sweet like I'm used to. So yeah. it's pretty good. <laughs> I also started taking hair, skin, and nail gummies this week. Oh my God. I started taking probiotics. <laughs> like, okay, let's talk about it. I will say though, what? I had to Google it because I was like, is something wrong with me? Probiotics will get you the first little while you start taking yeah. them because it's like your gut's trying to get used to it so if you catch my drift it was a rough yes. week <laughs> but we're trying to regulate okay <laughs> i should really take probiotics but it's so funny that you mentioned it because i just started taking vitamins because it's mm. obviously the winter and it's like i don't get any sun in the summer yeah. so i don't even get any sun in the winter if i don't get any sun in the summer yeah. so i'm like okay let me take vitamins and kind of help with like all that vitamin c and just like to help with everything else in my body um, vitamin d whoa hello i sounded like a monster <laughs> vitamin d is huge yes like definitely that's like one of the most important ones I yeah it's like, like a multivitamin but maybe i should throw in a probiotic too do it girl yeah i got these ones from target here i'll show you i yes. have them right here i just got the up and up brand because they're cheaper yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're they, these little pro gels oh um, they've been working pretty good they come in like little balls which the first time i swallowed them i was like oh my god i'm choking and dying like good to see you later world like yeah i don't know but i got used to it and they're actually really good they look nice. like little pearls Oh, pop culture stuff. Yes. Do you have stuff? I have a lot. Okay, well, probably because it's been so long since we recorded. Yeah. I only have four because I am really bad at keeping track, but we can just go every other. Okay, cool. So nothing crazy, but Tom Brady and Giselle, they're getting a divorce. Again, we didn't see this coming. Like, yeah. Literally, like, (laughs) no. I... 
goodbye. Like yeah. that relationship was so odd from Have the you, beginning. I no, I agree. Have you seen, okay, when when it was first announced officially that they were getting a divorce cuz then they, previously there were rumors that they both got divorce lawyers. Mm-hmm. Uh when it was officially announced, I don't know if you saw all the memes of Tom Brady basically talking about football and then it would switch to Giselle and she'd be like oh yeah me and the kids me and the kids me and the kids it'd go back to Bra- uh, Tom Brady and he'd be like yeah me and football me and football and it'd go back and forth to compare like what he their has, priorities are yep he has those kids are not his priority he yeah doesn't his whole life is football and he's gonna be done sooner or later like he's and it was it was so funny too because it's like um, I saw another meme that said like, oh yeah, he retired. And then the 40 days that he like wasn't doing football, he realized he hated his family. So that's why he like got out of retirement. And I was like, oh, that's so my sad gosh. for I know. his kids. But like, exactly. Why would you, like, why would you retire? Like, did Tampa Bay really give you that amazing of a deal? Probably. Yeah. I mean, he is Tom Brady. <laughs> but still. <laughs> fair, yeah, yeah, yeah. But still. Yeah, he's not a family guy. No. But he still insists on kissing his kids on the lips, so. It's like, I saw a TikTok about this similar to how, like, we will never switch to a three or four day, like, uh, work week or, like, work Mm -hmm. from home week so then we can have, like, a three day weekend. The reason why we won't is because men, (laughs) men hate their families so much that they'll use, like, any excuse to work. And that's why they, like, stay late. And that's why they golf. And that's why they do all this stuff. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, that's wait like a second. Such- I was like, that's, that's, like, a good point, you know? Yeah, but that's such a pessimistic view of the world. I know. Like, wow. No, literally, I, I texted my family. You know what? I texted my family hmm. at, like, okay, let me, give me one second. I texted my family last night at 1.10 a.m. They probably thought I was, like, drunk texting them. I was not. I was just fully myself. I texted them. I saw a TikTok about how mouth cancer is on the rise, and I looked in my mouth, and I have a small black spot on my left cheek, and now I've convinced myself I have mouth cancer. (laughs) And then literally right after that TikTok, I saw that there was a listeria outbreak in deli meat and cheese. And I'm like, I cannot live in this world i'm already a hypochondriac like i can't deal with this shit like every every time i hear something i'm like i'm literally going to die like honestly like hearing all this stuff how am i still living exactly and i don't mean that in a way where it's like i don't want to be here i want to live man i want to live i don't want to live in fear like this yeah like what do you mean mouth cancer is on the rise Uh, (laughs) what do you want me to do about it (sighs) i hate it i really hate it that Totally makes sense, but it's just, like, I use that in a way to, like, this is so bad. I use that in a way to excuse, like, what I do for my happiness. So it's, like, if it's spending $100 on books, do it. Because <laughs> I'm going to die anyways. Like, Fair, I, yeah. I survived you through, through a pandemic. Mm-hmm. I, like, survived through a pandemic that was, like, yes, two years still kind of going on. Um, Yeah, like, life can end any moment let me go buy those books you know like why not life's too short exactly tomorrow isn't promised okay (laughs) i can do whatever i want money always comes back joy doesn't exactly (laughs) exactly (laughs) i was so much of a hypochondriac growing up that my next door neighbors came up with this whole plot to like fool me that like the moon you know how like the sun can give you like skin cancer from like whatever they convinced me that the moon could give you skin cancer (gasps) because of the way that the light like reflected off of the sun and i believe them wholeheartedly and like for a month like wore sunscreen was like scared to play four square at night like playing night games i was like oh my gosh we've been outside for too long i'm gonna get cancer like i uh, (laughs) gullible and hypochondriac is not a good combination to be as a person and i am so i'm (gasps) yeah it was not good they still tease me about it to this day Okay, so. that's funny, but that's the type of shit that I would pull. Like, I would tell mm-hmm. you that. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't. I'd be like, okay, let's put on some sunscreen. Like, uh, it's not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, anyways, tangent aside, Giselle and Tom Brady got divorced. Yes. Yep. And so no one is surprised ever. Oh, so the new Rihanna song has come out and been out for a little bit since we have been on the podcast. And yeah. I love it. Selena did a cover. You guys should go to her personal TikTok page and listen to it because it'll leave you shook because she sounds amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I 
I love it. I think it's very different of like, you know, of a song for her. But because it's for the new Black Panther movie, I understand why it's not like a typical Rihanna song. But yeah. other than that, she sounds gorgeous in it. She sounds good. I missed her voice. Yes. It's so unique and raspy and like yes. like oh, uh, you can just always hear the emotion in her voice. Yeah, I forget how how delicate and meaningful she can sound in mm-hmm. some of her slower songs. And I'm just like, wow, I, I really missed it. I haven't gotten a chance to see Black Panther yet because it premiered on Thursday. Yes. But I am going Tuesday night with my friend Katie. So I'm nice. very excited about that. Uh, we haven't bought tickets yet, but we I should probably go watch it. <laughs> Do it, girl. Because we'll have to talk about it. Yes. No, you're right. You're right. Next pop culture thing that I have is that my husband, Henry Cavill, is leaving The Witcher on Netflix. And I am so incredibly pissed about it. I don't watch the show, but, like, I heard, like, everyone is fuming. So, like, there was already tension between Henry and the showrunners and the creators and the writers and all of that. Because Henry, being the nerd that he is, right, love him, he has read the books and he has played the games. And so he is an avid fan. And Mm -hmm. I I love that, right? Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to stay true to the material. But Netflix was like, no. We're going to go off and do our own thing. And they were like, I guess there were rumors that like they were mocking the material. And like, of course, Henry was upset Mm. about it because he's a huge fan of it. And so at first when I saw that he was leaving, I was like, what the fuck? Why are you leaving for Superman? DC is literally dying. I was like, why are you leaving? But then I heard all of the rumors about how there's been tension for so long between Netflix and Henry Mm -hmm. that I'm like, okay, no, actually, I support you leaving because I would be fucking pissed too if someone was mocking something that I really loved. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. And it's like you're making this show like the fans of the show care about the material. So like you don't have a show if the fans don't like the show. Exactly. So like you have to balance that, right? And so I I support that decision. I feel like he's not going to only have to do DC during this time, though. He is such a good Superman, though. I mean, I've never seen him in the Superman movies. I've never seen him. But he looks like... I know, and he's great. See, the thing is that he is a perfect Superman and he's a perfect Geralt in The Mm -hmm. Witcher. And so, personally, because I don't like DC, I would rather have him be in The Witcher because I feel like he really succeeds in it. And, like, DC is, like, always a hit or miss where it's, like, Mm -hmm. The Witcher, I feel like you kind of already have your built-in audience and it's already a success. So, like, leaving already feels weird when it's, like, already very successful. Yeah, and how do you feel about Liam Hemsworth being his uh, replacement? It's fucking ridiculous. Are you kidding me? You think Liam can be Geralt? No. Apparently, apparently Liam was in the running when they were first doing auditions. Like, oh, I think he was, okay. like, almost second in line for the role. Got it. Okay. And so I think that's why it ended up going to him now. But, like... The thing is, you too, can't ma- recast the main character. Exactly. Like that. So the same way with Grey's Anatomy, where you can't just like have the main character leave, you can't recast the main character. Like that shit. No, bugs you me. can't. Yeah. You like fully cannot. Yes. And so I don't know. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if we're gonna watch the next season with Liam. Mm. Like I don't know. I'm just not feeling it because again, Henry is Geralt. Like that is yeah. who he is. And so if Liam comes in, I'm like. <laughs> Where is Geralt? Like, you're just playing Geralt. Like, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. 100%. And it's like, the thing about Liam, too, it's like, what a boring acting job for him. Because if he tries to take his own liberties with the character, it's not going to be consistent through the seasons and it's not going to make sense. So, like, it's just, that's why you can't do things like that. Uh, it's just like so in sad. Twitches 1 and Twitches 2, <laughs> they switched the actress of Ileana. That shit pissed me off. I remember being a kid and I was like, who is this? Yeah, who you're is like, this? I don't recognize you. Yeah, literally. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. Bye. So I'm just still really upset about it, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> this is kind of sad, but Aaron Carter passed away 
at the age yeah. of 32. I I haven't heard anything. I don't think his official cause of death has been revealed. I know that he had like struggled a lot for a long time. But like again, I think my understanding is that he had been clean for a while. So yeah. now it's just like I wonder I wonder if that had something to do with it, if something mm-hmm. else happened. I'm very curious, but thoughts for his family yeah so, no because i know he had a little girl so same no i it's funny too because like we had literally just talked about him in the Lindsay lohan um episode <gasps> you're right yeah and so it was just kind of surreal to be like oh my like oh my gosh like yeah. it's so crazy that we had just talked about him and now this is ha- this had happened and stuff yeah. and so yeah it's um it's very surreal and again sending all the love and hugs to his family Okay, next thing. So this is kind of old news, but I have to bring it up because it's okay. juicy as hell. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but the K-pop group BTS officially mm-hmm. enlisted in the South Korea military service, which wow. is required uh, mm. um, by all men in South Korea to serve in the military. Now there's so much drama to this, and I feel like you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna love it. Okay, let's hear it. So serving in the military in South Korea is like a really, really great honor. And it's like it's like normal. Right. Where whereas like here in the U.S., it's like, oh, if you want to, you can. But like Mm -hmm. in South Korea, it is mandatory, but it's an honor to like go and serve your country. Mm -hmm. No other pop group has ever skipped service ever. Everyone has gone like even it doesn't matter if you're famous or not or whatever. You go and you serve. But BTS was the first ever group to ever question skipping the service or ever bring up that question. Gotcha. Um, Because of how like successful they've been. So the South Korea government was like, oh my goodness, what do we do? And then I don't know why they did this, but they opened opinions and thoughts from the public because they didn't know what to do. And then when they did that, people were angry because they were like, um, you're the government. You should decide. Yeah. You know? Because they're like, what do you mean? Yeah. So it, it was... You want our opinion. Like... Yeah. It was just like really weird. It's like, why are... I mean, I guess thanks for like asking for our opinions, but you you ultimately decide what they're going to do because you're the government, you know? 100%. So then... BTS sold out four shows at the Sophie Stadium in LA. And that is the, they are the first artists to sell out four shows at Sophie Stadium, which is insane. All in a row too. So insane. Still, the South Korea government wasn't sure if they like wanted to dismiss their military service. Mm. And so they gave BTS one last chance to prove like you know, to prove their success and their popularity by putting on a free concert in South Korea. This happened on October 15th, right? Okay. And it was, as you've probably assumed, it was crazy. Like, packed. Mm-hmm. It's a free concert. So yeah, everyone went. of course. Right? To, like, kind of prove how big they are. And just yeah. in South Korea, too. Like, if they did a free concert in the U.S., like, it would be insane. Yeah. Oh, I can't even imagine. Exactly. So they do that. And it's a huge success, right? Mm -hmm. On top of all of their four shows in L.A. It's a huge success. And then, as petty as they are, BTS, two days later after their free concert, put out a public statement that they're going to fulfill their military service. All without waiting for the South Korea government to say anything or make a decision. Because they were just like, you know what? We're done. Because they were being pulled back and forth. No, 100%. And I kind of don't blame them for that. Yeah. I also think, I mean, again, I don't know a ton on this situation, so I don't want to speak too much. But it's like, I respect that a lot. Because then I could see a lot of people being upset if they didn't, being like, well, why are you just because yeah. you're famous means that you don't have to put your life at risk like the rest yeah. of us? You know what I mean? So like mm-hmm. I, I could understand that. So but wow, how stressful for them. Like going back and forth. They're like, we're done playing your games. Yes, exactly. Like, make up your mind or be done with it. Like we're not dealing with Ex- this. Exactly. I like give them all the props for it. And like all of the fans are supportive, too, because obviously Everyone knows that, like, in Korea, men have to do a mandatory military service. So they knew, mm-hmm. every all the fans knew that this was going to come. So, Coming, like, yeah. obviously no one is, like, upset about it. They're just, like, surprised that they, like, mm-hmm. announced it in October. It's Dang. crazy, though, because they <clears throat> won't return until 2025 as a K-pop group because of their military service. Isn't That's that crazy? That's how long the service is? Yes. And so... 
they won't return until 2025 and then i think their contract as a k-pop group ends in like 2026 or 2027 so they only have two years after that to like be a group isn't that crazy wow yeah so everyone those is like, two years are gonna be crazy yeah when they come back i know i know i i like it's yeah it's gonna be insane and then another crazy thing as well is that an analysis from Fortune reported that between 2014 and 2023, BTS would have contributed $29.1 trillion to the South Korean economy. But because because they're not taking a break, like that's like there's no more money. Trillion? Yes. Theoni, imagine That's not being even a, a real number, bro. Exa- exactly. Imagine being an artist and being like the main contributor to your country. Like, isn't that crazy? I'm (laughs) shook. Right? That is insane. That is another level. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's why the South Korean government wasn't sure what to do. Because it's like, okay, well, like, are are they truly, like, bringing in money? And, like, do we really want to excuse them? Like, is it really true about their success and all of this? Like, whatever. And they were just like, no, we're done. We'll we'll go serve our military service. But then you guys can just do whatever. (laughs) dang isn't that crazy i'm so shook right now yeah i had no idea it was like that big of a situation honestly yeah i mean i guess i didn't realize just how much back and forth they were having with Mm. the government but um now that it's all settled and stuff so i mean it's still really sad because obviously we won't be getting any new music uh, when they're in um service but yeah (laughs) okay so this isn't that big of a deal this is like my last one because i mentioned one of them earlier but eric and gabby from the bachelorette broke up which i have not been watching the bachelorette and bachelor in paradise and all that for a while like i'm kind of done with that Mm -hmm. um but gabby is on dancing with the stars so i've been keeping up with her because of that and they broke up which is really sad um but Dancing with the Stars is getting so good. It's the semifinals on Monday. Yeah. They're going to have a double elimination, which I think is such a oh, hoax. Yeah. Um, because it's the end of the show. Like, if you're going to do double eliminations, do it earlier in the show when there's, like, a bunch of, like, the people who can't do crap. Exactly. There. But now you're doing a double elimination when there's still a lot of good people left. Yes. Make it make sense. Yeah. Because I'm pissed. So I, I just Googled her real quick, and I guess I don't recognize her or him. She's hilarious, though, I will say. Wait, was she the most recent Bachelorette? Yes. Oh, And wait. she was, like, one with, like, because there were two Bachelorettes this last <gasps> I season. was just going to ask, was that when they did two Bachelorettes? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So they broke up? hmm But she's on Dancing with the Stars? Yes. Oh, interesting. But that's all my pop culture what, stuff. I know you have a few more. What would you do if I submitted you to The Bachelor? <laughs> Number one, I would never get chosen. What? No. Number two, I don't look like those people. What? I'm freaking weird. I would be the one on The Bachelorette where they play like the music that's weird and it's like doom, doom, doom. And she's like doing all the weird, creepy shit. And like that's the edit I would get. What? Or I would get the edit no. of like the girl who cries all the time. Oh, okay. Like I no. would never. I. <laughs> I would never be the one who actually is, like, successful on no, the show. No, you're right. You would definitely be the girl who cries the most. But, <laughs> but I think you could get the first impression, Rose, because I feel like <clears throat> the guy would, like, love your kindness and, like, selflessness so much that he'd be like, oh, my gosh, Theoni is just the sweetest ever okay but that's so nice but that's also like under the circumstances that i'd actually be able to speak in that situation like i feel like i would be so nervous that he'd be like hi nice to meet you and i'd be like you're like huh (laughs) literally (laughs) um but i don't know i don't know what i would do if he submitted me oh wait okay wait what would your occupation be like not seriously like Like, you know how sometimes they do like the weird occupations I don't even know. You could do I like really animal do whisperer. <laughs> and am I, bruh, I am not an animal whisperer. Okay. I was just thinking about this today in my head, actually. Like the most, what are, what do you think are the most scary animals? Because then I'll tell you mine. Oh, the most scary animals. Yes. Okay, wait, let me think. I would have to say I like hate any type of insects. 
Like, mm-hmm. I don't... Yes. I'm not afraid of, like, sharks or lions or mm-hmm. bears or whatever. Like, I'm afraid of, like, the tiny little fuckers that can yes. get yes. wherever. And that is the yes. most scariest to me. Okay. Yes. I have a ranking of three. Okay. okay. Go for it. Squirrels, butterflies, birds. <laughs> I can't believe squirrels are your first one. What the heck? Okay, those motherfuckers are terrifying. They literally okay. like crawl around. They I you, guess. they make these loud noises when they climb up the trees. I guess. There's a bunch hanging out by our dumpster <laughs> over there, and they're always jumping out. Like, oh my god! Like, oh my god! No, no, Ugh. You're so no. Weird. Birds so, fly at your freaking yeah. face, bruh. Some birds can be kind of scary, like because I feel like some birds aren't scared, so they'll just like mm. come at you. Butterflies, I could understand because they're an insect. Sometimes they're really, really pretty, but sometimes they're too pretty that I find them really gross. Mm. Butterflies are part of my trauma because I remember when I was like 10, I went to a butterfly museum in South Dakota and like we went in. My little cousin, um, Nicodemi, she was probably like, I don't know, like four or five. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big our age gap is, actually. We went in there and she is like in her mom's like arms, like bawling her eyes out. And then I'm like way too old for my own good, sitting in my mom's lap, bawling my eyes out because these fucking moths keep trying to land on me. Oh, yeah. No, I can't. I can't do moths. Mm -mm. Mm. Squirrels, though, it's really interesting. I think it's because Cora, my dog, hunts them. So it's like I don't she could eliminate them like so quick. Sure. So I'm Fair safe. Enough. Okay, <laughs> I'm safe. Of course, um, keeping you safe. Yeah, no, truly. What um, are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, oh, The Bachelor. I'm going to submit you to The Bachelor. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're, I, I, that's why you I said you're. You can tell them my job is whatever you want it to be. <laughs> okay, maybe I might. I really think you could get far. The thing is, is I don't think they would ever like take me in the first place. <laughs> I think they would. They've taken a couple of Minnesota women. And that's true. Yeah. So, well, we'll see. Okay. Well, we'll see where the cards fly. Okay. I'll I'll look up when the application is open. (laughs) Okay. Great. (laughs) Um, Okay. Couple other things. So, Taylor Swift announced an Eras tour, and her tickets go Mm -hmm. on sale this coming Tuesday. But when this episode airs, the tickets would have already gone on sale yesterday or whatever. And I'm so excited because it's an Eras tour. So, it's all of her freaking albums and i'm like i'm gonna die trying to get tickets yeah that's gonna be <laughs> I, I the website's gonna break i know i know yeah. and so that's how why i'm nervous are, are you do you have like a number you're like i'm willing to spend this much or are you like i'm going if it's the last thing i do uh probably like 100 or 200 i'm not like yeah. i'm like fine with doing like nosebleeders like i don't have to be in the fucking pit like yeah. <laughs> um but i because i do know that i want to go because if i don't i will regret it like i can already Fair. feel it you know yeah 100 percent. it's like the ariana grande <gasps> no that's, i'll never yes that's literally what i was thinking about yeah. when i was thinking about buying tickets for this because i was like well i don't really like i don't have any like spare money to really like throw at this or whatever yeah. but i'm like no 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 I, that happened with Ariana Grande, and I was pissed because it yep. looked so good. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. have to go. I know. It'll be incredible. <laughs> yeah. So you have to go and then send me videos. Okay, I will, I will. <laughs> I really hope that she performs better than Revenge. That would be insane. Iconic. <laughs> yeah. Right? Isn't that how yes, it goes? it does. See? <laughs> I'm kind of, I don't, I don't love her, but I know her. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> oh my god what's that one song that i used to listen to that made me like freak out haunted is that a song <gasps> yeah you and that song. i walk a fragile line and it's like yes, the piano yes, yeah, yeah. yes okay sorry <laughs> that song freaking bangs like it's mm-hmm. so good <sighs> yeah but yeah so i'm gonna try to fight for my life for her tickets <laughs> great good luck <laughs> my next thing is that elon musk took over twitter and i hate him <laughs> <laughs> enough said yeah that's no, it really i just it just pisses me off <laughs> he's that man no. i don't even know what to think about that no. man and it's like the fact that like he has like all the red red flags but like everyone still puts him on this pedestal and i'm like dude he is not a good guy like why do you guys keep doing that like ugh. His ego doesn't fucking need it. No, it really doesn't. And then my last thing, the most important thing, 
is that Chris Evans is the sexiest man alive. <laughs> I, okay. I will say well-deserved. Yes. Like, well-deserved. But what yeah. I will say, like, other people were saying, he should have been the sexiest man alive, like, a few years ago. Because, yes. like, I feel like there's nothing this year that I was like, oh, that makes sense why he, you know? Yes. But. Like, it's so long overdue. That's why I'm so know, happy for him. Yes, I agree. But I really think that um, Chris Evans should have been the sexiest man alive a few years ago. Yeah. Like over Blake Shelton or Adam Levine. Yeah. And the sexiest man alive this year should have been Henry Cavill. That would have oh. made way too much sense with okay. everything going on. You're right. Returning to DC, leaving The Witcher, like all this stuff. Like, yeah. People w- are feral over Henry Cavill. Yeah, it would have been good press for him. Well, how has Henry Cavill not been the sexiest? Look at that know. man. And two, you know what? That just reminded me. His new movie, Enola Holmes 2, on Netflix just yes. dropped. So if he was named Sexiest Man Alive, it literally would have been a press fest for him. Like yes, all the 100%. PR. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. But still, I'm happy for Chris. Who gets to decide that? I have no clue. Can I decide it? Like just go through <laughs> pictures, ranking them. That sounds like a fun ass job. Let me know. I'll come with reasons. Yeah, you're ready. And evidence. Yes. Sweet. Then are we ready to dive into today's topic? Yes, ma'am. So today we are talking about Selena Gomez's new documentary, My Mind and Me. Um, I'm curious to hear your overall thoughts first. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a little bit different than I expected. Same. But... I still thought it was well done yeah. because I I was going back and forth about it the more I was yeah. thinking about because to some degree I'm like I wanted more like I wanted Same. more specifics like I yeah. feel like there were things that I knew about going on like mm-hmm. during the eras that she was talking about that just mm-hmm. didn't get touched on like yeah. we didn't hear anything about rare beauty we didn't hear about yeah. we didn't hear about her rare album and like the fact that it didn't do as well as they were predicting like affected her and like all of this stuff and like so I felt like there was a lot that I missed but at the same time I will say that like it's her story so she can yes. share it the way she wants to share it right and like yes. I still think it was very vulnerable very like thought provoking like really well done but again like when you say a documentary is covering six years how much in detail can you really get in I depth know. in an hour and a half like you you can't hit everything so I still yeah. think like with with what she did I still liked it so I agree I was also in the same thought process that like I wanted more and it was the documentary one wasn't exactly what I was expecting but I liked it and Mm -hmm. I also want to respect Selena's vision for the documentary but also her privacy like if she if she didn't want to talk about it that's cool like I'm I'm good to keep rolling with whatever we're gonna talk about in the documentary and so a part of me was just like walking that fine line of being like I wanted more but If she doesn't feel comfortable talking about it, that's totally fine. Like, I'm okay with it. I will say I did like the way that she, like, was almost connecting with her past when in the Mm. beginning of the documentary, she was like, I don't even want to talk about my past. Like, she wants, she doesn't want to be Disney. She doesn't want to be all of that. She wants, like, a hard line, like. Exactly. And I love the way that, like, this documentary not only talked about her mental health but also her connecting back to her roots and where she came from and I was like wow that's that's so beautiful when it was clear that she wanted to run away from it like a lot of it yes 100% and it's like what people say all the time like healing your inner child like like being okay with your past and like letting that be yes. what it's going to be. And like, I think that's a huge part of what she had to deal with to be able to like really move forward. So I thought yeah. that was really, really cool to see. The one thing I will say I appreciated right off the bat is that they gave warnings about content and yes. a link to resources right away. Yes. Because I feel like so many shows will like either give a brief warning or give nothing at all, then do the entire show and then be like, here's a link to resources. Like, no, that's not what it is. Let people know what they're in for so they can decide if like that's something they want. And like also, I think it's really cool that they like put the link for resources at the beginning too because 
I don't I know. Agree. Maybe someone comes to this video hoping to find something and there it is right away. You know, like I just think that's a really smart thing on their end. I agree, too, because it's always normally after the fact, right? It's after mm-hmm. the fact that they've shown or they're talked about all of this stuff and then they like list resources. I really appreciated that they had it at the forefront, which I think, again, is another decision that Selena made being like totally. very conscious about mental health and everything. To start off, it was so crazy to see her on the revival tour because I remember I all know. of that. Like, yes. I remember when she canceled all her shows. I remember when she announced her tour and her album. Like, it was just, like, so huge. So seeing footage of her backstage and prepping for it was insane because yep. just, like, so many years have passed and so much has happened. And I'm like, this I is know. insane. No, I know 100%. And, like, yeah. I loved that era. Like, I Me too. loved her revival yeah. album. And I also loved, I said this about the J-Lo documentary, too. Like, I love seeing people in rehearsal. I love seeing people's, like, creative minds behind things. And obviously, that wasn't the focus, and we just got very little glimpses of it in this. Yeah. But I thought it was really cool. And she just looked so young. I like, know. It's like, and, and, I mean, it's crazy to see that because I think about myself six years ago when I was 18. I know. Like, it doesn't seem like a long time, but it really kind of is. Yeah. No, she was just a baby. And it was so Mm. weird seeing her how, like, how young she was. And I was like, wow, this is just crazy. Yeah. (laughs) I also related to her quote when she was backstage, kind of like, not complaining, but just like expressing her thoughts about the show the night before opening night. Mm. And it, she was saying that like if she was a guy, she could wear a beanie and switch her T-shirts and she'd be fine. Like she wouldn't mm-hmm. have to do all of these costume changes. And I'm like, you're so right. The bar is so high for women and so low for men. And I just hate it. <laughs> no, it is 100 percent. And I can't like, oh, my gosh, I Yeah, it makes me mad. It really makes me mad. And the one thing I will say, I remember she said something about like her in a dialogue saying something about how like this is all sucking the life out of her and like all of these things. And I was like, I feel like that's the definition of mental illness. And like Mm -hmm. she's sitting there feeling guilty about how this looks, like how this is portrayed to everyone around her. And it's just like that's the exact thought spiral that people get stuck in with mental illness. And so I think... I think they did a good job in this documentary, like highlighting the moments that show like the truth of what mental illness can be. Yes. At least her mental illness, right? Because she's diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Yeah. And everything looks different for everyone. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I do. I will say that reminded me. I love that she read from her journals. Yeah. Like her narrating was her actual journals. And I was like, that's amazing. I I love that so much. No, I love that, too. I thought it was so smart and like interesting and like also the way she wrote though was like beautiful and thought-provoking like wow i was like i want her to write more music with that i know i i was like when i journal i sound like a psycho like i don't sound beautiful and like just like the language she was using it was just gorgeous gorgeous i felt so much of her pain and stress when she was crying Mm. saying that like she wants to make sure it's perfect and that she didn't want the the head of universal records or whoever it was to like regret signing her and all of that stuff and i'm like the pressure that she had on her i'm just like yeah I just want to give you a hug. Like, you're no, doing literally. so great. But again, you're right that it's like the spiral where it's like you can't get out. So, of course, she's there and she's just spiraling and spiraling and she needs to make sure it's perfect and it looks good and it's not too kiddish and da da da. And I just like, in that moment, I just wanted to give her a hug because I'm like, honey, no, you're doing great. 100%. And going off of that, I think one of my favorite parts of that was like, then the director the executive from the label yep. came in or whatever and then they're all telling her like you're doing great you're doing yeah. great like don't let it spiral you and like I appreciate that in the care that went into that mm-hmm. but the one thing I will say I appreciated that it wasn't like she heard those words and it was like a flip and she's like okay yeah. good I got the validation and mm-hmm. I'm ready to go it's like because when you're so deep in that hearing that doesn't make a difference like you have to yeah. believe it yourself you have to be ready to like cut that off and yeah. like clearly she was in her head about it and again that just shows the reality of like what it's like to go through something like that I know yeah I just oh it it really pained me it pained me just because again too it's like that was six years ago and like you know her journey you already know where she is today and so like seeing her struggle that much 
for so long it's just like it hurts me to be like wow like I, I wish mm-hmm. I could give you a hug or do something to like help, help you or at least like take it away like oh it just like it it really did pain me yeah another quote that did that hit me the hardest I don't know when she said this but it was I think it was still in this like revival kind of scene where she was like crying backstage she said when am I going to be good enough by myself and I was like, oh, you're so right. Like, I think mm-hmm. everyone questions that because I think in the context she was talking about Justin and Disney and all of this stuff. And she's just like, I just want to be myself. But yeah. the media won't let me do that. And I was just like, oh. It's interesting. They did. Uh, sorry, I keep bringing this up because mm-hmm. I think this is the last documentary we watched. But Jayla was saying the same thing. Yeah. Like, not in as much words like yeah. that, like blatantly, but like. It was always about who she's in a relationship or what she's doing. It was never just about, like, her work ethic, her worth, like, her talent. Like, it was always about the stuff going around her. Yes! Again, I I have notes about this, but the media, it fucking sucks. And I hate them. And I hate the way that they portray women. And they just need to stop. I hate it. No, straight up. Yeah. A general um, comment about the documentary I personally thought it was shot beautifully. Like, I thought it was gorgeous. I, it looked like an actual movie, yes! not like a camera following someone around. Yes. No, it was just so, the shots were so thoughtful and like everything was so meaningful. And mm-hmm. like we've watched the JLo documentary and I thought it was like fine. And then I also watched the Miss Americana documentary about t- Taylor Swift mm-hmm. on Netflix. Um, and I thought that was great as well. But I think for sure this documentary, the director just took so much time and thought about the shots to like make it so meaningful and i was like in awe by it no literally i (laughs) hope it wins awards or something because i thought it really was like brilliant yeah going Mm -hmm. off of like your point about how media sucks i forget when this is i think it was like right after the revival or kind of during that Mm -hmm. of like she went out and partied one time like with her friends and they're like she has a drug problem and yes people were shouting at her like where's the alcohol and blah 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 i'm like can she not be a normal human? Yes. Like, normal people all the time going out and get drunk on a Friday, Saturday, like whatever. Like that's that's people's lives. Like, I know. It doesn't mean she's like, where's the alcohol or she's addicted or whatever. And even if yeah. she was, how cruel to throw it back in her face over and over and over yes. again. Th- yes. No, I literally have a whole comment about it because it was just so ridiculous. The montages that they showed of the media being absolutely disgusting to her how she was like partying too much and like i think like a paparazzi like yelled at her like oh justin has a new girl are you jealous i was like who asked that in their right mind who who asked that question i was so so pissed and they were using like the drug problem and then too much partying as an excuse for her canceled tour before she went um public with her lupus and her bipolar yeah. disorder and all of that stuff and i'm like that's so fucking disgusting and mm-hmm. you know what it reminded me of it reminded mm-hmm. me when everyone was being so rude to chadwick boseman because mm-hmm. he didn't look he was too skinny and he looked sickly and he's not taking care of himself uh guess what he was battling cancer and no one knew until he passed away and now where are all those people who were saying all those shitty things literally it just pisses me off. It's like people just have the courage to fucking like trash all these celebrities yeah. without knowing what's true. And it just rubs me the wrong way. Like, I don't I don't care if no, you don't like them. it's honestly disgusting. Like, where's yeah. the humanity in that? Exactly. Like, it's not there. Exactly. I don't care if you don't like the person, right? The, all that matters is that they are still human and they have problems and they are struggling and they are trying their best everyone's always just trying their best maybe that's just my philosophy with stuff but like I think keeping that in mind it helps me like as a therapist right it Mm -hmm. helps me extend empathy to people even if like they're doing something that I don't agree with or that's really hard for me to like conceptualize like how are you doing that it's like it helps me like gain empathy for them and like remove my judgment for the system right or like from the situation and so I don't know, just something I'm thinking about, but yeah, the media is no. cruel. In conclusion, they yes, suck. no, I hate the media. Burn them down. Burn them. Just kidding. Burn them down. <laughs> Not only could you tell how tired she was during this revival tour, you could tell how much pain she was in. And mm. there was this like really, really vulnerable moment where 
in the documentary, she is sitting in her bed and talking to the camera about how after being diagnosed with bipolar disorder, you know, she's remembering all these things that she would say to her friends and her parents, just like so, like so angry and so not herself. And then she'd wake up the next morning and her parents would be like, hey, we know you said this last night, but we just want to let you know that like that doesn't change us or change our opinion about you. Like we still love you. We'll, we'll still support you. All of this stuff. You could see like how much guilt and pain she had of just like how she was so mean to her parents, but she would wake up being so guilty, which would then lead her into confusion about like what was happening with herself. And I just like that moment really made me realize like, wow, like she of course she felt so lost during her revival tour. Of course she was dealing with all this stuff. She was so confused and didn't have any of the tools to help her really understand what was happening. And so I I just really felt for her. And like you could really tell that she was genuine no. about being like really guilty about the things that she said to her parents. But I'm like, at the same time, I'm like, that's not your fault. Like we know you're trying your best. And it just like hurt me to see that was one of those moments that showed the reality of like bipolar disorder yes. so yep. well because like some like some misconception too is that people think that like bipolar is the disorder where it's like one minute you're angry and the next minute you're sad like yeah a lot of the time like manic stages like it kind of sounded like I mean I don't know the situation enough yep. to be like this is what that was but it sounds like that was like a manic stage she was going to and in that it's yes. almost like you just do these things you're not thinking straight and mm -hmm. you're just like so angry and you do things that aren't yourself and then the come yeah. down from that is like how was I ever that person you yeah. know what I mean um and yeah. I think we can all relate to that, too, in some ways. So, like, obviously, it's different when, like, you have that diagnosis. But, like, I know I've said some things when I've been angry, like, to people I care about. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why did I let myself say yeah. that? That's not what I think. That's not how I feel. But it's yeah. just, like, you let yourself get so caught up in that. Um, yeah. But – and the one thing I will say, I just want to – like point this out so like when they were talking about selena like in the hospital for lupus and then when she started like ripping her ivs out and then ended up going to like the psych ward yep. or whatever raquel her friend kept talking about like yeah we'll talk about that later but <laughs> we um she kept like using like a psychotic break and like a mental breakdown like interchangeably and like at least for me like my conceptualization of it is that those two things aren't interchangeable because you can have yeah. a mental breakdown like think of like what psychotic means right so like there is sorry I'm going into my whole therapist like no rant. go for it but like in the DSM-5 right like where we make diagnosis there's like a specifier for bipolar disorder like bipolar disorder with like psychotic features right and so mm -hmm. like that could be like a psychotic episode right or a psychotic break or whatever that could be yeah. part of the mania associated with bipolar but then lots of people can have mental breakdowns it doesn't mean you have to have yeah. bipolar disorder like so I think it's yes. important to differentiate those because I think especially with the word like psychotic right you don't call someone psychotic like that's not yeah. fair it's like someone's mm -hmm. dealing with psychosis they have like symptoms of psychosis like you don't yeah. call them like you're psychotic or you yeah. know what I mean so anyways no I just had to point that out because I think that's like an important differentiation that has to be made no, I I agree because I am on the flip side of you where it's like I'm not well versed in like these terms. And I think, again, I think society and media in general just uses these terms interchangeably where people mm -hmm. don't even like know the specific differences and like what they specifically mean, me included. And so that was really, really educating for me to understand that like obviously it cannot be interchanged this is kind of random but mm -hmm. in it kind of came right after that scene that we're talking about but she was talking about like her dad right yeah. um and kind of her family and how they grew up and i think this part like actually made me cry when she yeah. was like i miss my dad and he knows that but that doesn't change anything yeah and that like i don't know that's so heartbreaking because it's like that recognition that like i care and I yeah. miss him 
and I might want that in my life, but I'm still like pissed about how everything went down and like, but that doesn't mean so, like it changes. I thought he passed. My next question was that is, is oh, her dad he? still around? Oh, he is still alive. Oh, he is? Yeah, because it said November 4th, 2022. Her biological dad wasn't in the picture much while she was growing up. So people have a lot of questions about him. And yes, he is still alive. Got it. So, okay, that makes sense then. Because it starts from when she was really little. And there were those adorable pictures of her and her and parents. And videos. And it's so adorable. And it was about her and how she said she like, she used to remember that her dad was like, like, I can't. Like, I can't support you. Like, I can't be here for you. And it makes me really, really sad. But I still love you. And it was, I, you could definitely tell, like, the pain in Selena of, like, oh, th- it's so confusing to her because she doesn't understand. Mm-hmm. I just want like, to say, too. to me. I know. Yeah. I know. I just want to say, too, that her mom, as a high schooler, like, younger, looks, j- they look alike. Selena and her mom look yeah. so alike. They totally did. <laughs> like, totally I was looking did. at the pictures and I was, like, that's selena i'm like oh no that's her that's, mom no, when she was younger yeah. i was yep. like oh my gosh totally totally agree yeah i thought it was really funny when she went into the high school and at first they like <laughs> wouldn't let her in yeah. and then she went into the middle school and like i just thought that was really sweet like the one yeah. thing i will say like i feel like they did a good job balancing like the reality of like her mental illness but like balancing like the highs and the lows that comes yeah. with that right like it mm-hmm. wasn't like just showing the highs and then one mental breakdown or like showing the lows and showing one moment yeah. of joy like it felt very realistic to like what it felt like for her okay when she talks about wanting to be like an actress growing up and stuff she said something like that she fell in love with this the escape of things in that and then never stopped mm-hmm. and i just thought that was like so such an interesting way to put it because I think that like we can all relate to that right where it's like so easy to get caught up in something and then it's like you like that almost becomes your reality you know what I mean like it's just it's very interesting but I think it's like it what what makes me a little like sad and kind of taken aback is that like when did she realize that she like liked the escape because she started Mm -hmm. on Barney at like seven which she Mm -hmm. had said in the documentary it's like okay well like that's awesome that you're doing what you love but it's like but then when did you realize that you liked the escape of it because then that signals to me I'm like okay well is everything okay like I want to make sure that like everything's okay at home in your life in school and stuff and I think that's just like me kind of like now being very aware of like these signs of that like maybe someone isn't doing well no 100 percent, and that could absolutely be part of it too and like yeah you know there's signs and that's the thing about mental illness too it's not always caused by something this yeah. is something i've had arguments with about different family members and like friends yeah. like things like that not like arguments but just like disagreements like yeah mental illness isn't always caused by like an event or mm-hmm. something like sometimes i mean yes of course there's circumstances that like worsen things right or like maybe trigger things to get worse but mental illness is like a lot of the times just like a physical illness right and I think that's that's where the stigma comes from because people are like think you're just making it up in your head yeah that's not the reality of it like it's like a very it's a very real thing like it's yeah so I'm not gonna go on the rant about that um yeah here's a scene that pissed me off so I was in remember when Selena gave that um talk at McLean Hospital in boston um was that like the conference yeah the conference yes. yeah which we i've like sent clients to mclean before too like that's one of the oh hospitals we work pretty close with so that was like kind of cool yeah. to see like her in boston working with one of like the like units that we yeah work alongside sometimes um but like right before she spoke at the conference Raquel walks into the room and like completely ignored her and Selena was like what I I don't understand their friendship I'm gonna be honest and like I say that which I feel like I'm kind of being a hypocrite saying I hate the media and I hate when people make judgments without knowing the situation (laughs) and that's kind of what I'm doing right now but like the way it was portrayed in the moments that were shown on camera did not paint Raquel in a Mm -mm. good light 
Like, she did not seem like she was a very good no. friend at all to her. Yeah. No, and I remember Selena literally looking at the camera and rolling her eyes when Rich- yeah. Rochelle walked in. And I'm like, wait what the heck just happened? I was like, that was like a really weird vibe. But I agree. I mean, again, I don't know the full story, but I just like, I think all I can do is hope that like Selena surrounds herself with people who do genuinely care about her. And maybe that is Raquel or whatever. But in my opinion, I don't think it is. But that also doesn't matter because I am not Selena. Like, (laughs) you know, so it's like, it's like, I don't know. It's conflicting because it's like, well, I have a really, really strong feeling that Selena watched this documentary before it was ever aired. So she had seen rough cuts of it. Of course, she left them in. But then but then I think like, well, why did you leave them in then? Like, you know, Mm -hmm. you could have easily cut it out, but she left it in. So I'm curious, like what the state of their friendship is now, because I know in an interview, Selena said like, um, some people you see in the documentary are not in my life now and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing but it just means that like sometimes people grow apart so I don't know if Raquel is like a part of that or not um but she did say that so especially I'm sure during the revival area maybe her managers things like that like maybe those aren't the same people she so that could mean a lot of people I loved hearing her talk about lose you to love me and I love that yeah. that was like her first song to go number one because it was so yeah. special to her. And I like know. for that to be your first number one and like have it be that for you. What a like a cool moment. And the fact I you know me, I'm such a hoe for like listening to like the songwriting process or yes. hearing about things <laughs> are created. But like the fact that they wrote that song in like 45 minutes is yes. so cool to me because like yeah. sometimes when something's meant to be said, it just like flows out of you. Yeah. Yeah, no. It, again, it was just like poetry. Like, I remember yes. when it reached number one. And I remember when she performed at the, um, what's the the award show that she did? Was it AMAs? Yes. Yes. I remember it was, like, released that she was performing at the AMAs in the first time in years or whatever. And it was huge. Like, I remember living that moment and, like, seeing yep. it again in this documentary. I just felt so happy for her again. Yes, and then going off of that when she performed, I remember after that performance, everyone was like, she can't sing, she yep. can't do anything, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And I love that they used that opportunity to like really highlight like the somatic symptoms of like anxiety and like how yes. that can manifest like out of your control in your body. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't her, like it was her anxiety making her voice like not yeah. sound like she know it can, you know, and I thought that was... That was cool to highlight that, but it's also just so sad that people are so quick to attack. Like, you try getting up on that stage with all the expectations and the lights and the crowd and, like, everything, and you try to sing perfect. Like, it's not easy. No, it's not. And you know what? It's funny, too, because before that scene, there she had a meeting with her management or whatever, and she had to leave the room. She was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, everyone. And she just, like, left the room. And it was because, like, her anxiety was just, like, way too much because they were talking about the AMAs and her trip to... London after um, she visited Africa and then going to Paris or whatever like all of that stuff like of course her anxiety would like skyrocket you know Mm -hmm. I loved seeing her trip to Kenya Um, I thought that it was Kenya right I think I think so I was trying to remember the country and I was like I have forgot (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I thought that was really cool too that we got to see that um Selena seemed very genuine in her like pursuits there and like what she was doing there Raquel didn't no you know what pissed me off when Raquel mm -hmm. was like oh she said something about like oh yeah like Selena likes younger guys and Selena's like Raquel why would you say that literally I was like a friend does not say that like i would say uh, that to your face in private but not in a crowd like yes on, like this mission trip vibe yeah like, that's not like time and place honey exactly like, that's and not that's, it yeah no that one that interaction rubbed me the wrong way oh another thing that rubbed me the wrong way that raquel did um mm-hmm. was telling selena like that kenya is not the reality and like blah 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 yeah. i just that rubbed me the wrong way because like to some degree i get what she was saying she's yes. like you can't stay here forever with what you've got going on right now like 
trying to remind her of that and like I get that but at the same time it's like it felt like it was completely ignoring that like this is the reality for people yeah it just might not be I don't know again it's like maybe necessarily she's not always saying the worst things but it's about the delivery it's the tone it's like all these other things that make it feel so icky no I agree it I remember her saying that too of like this isn't the reality because we have to go to London after this and then we have to go to Paris Mm -hmm. like we can't stay forever like but then she was trying to like backtrack and be nice she'd be like yeah let's just like make this a quarterly trip then and I'm like Mm -hmm. that's great but the first half of what you said did not sound genuine it it left me so confused you know yes exactly yeah that's what I mean I felt very conflicted about that yeah so and maybe it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, my sister's not like this, but I know some people have relationships with their like siblings where it's like you are like the meanest person ever to them. And then the mm-hmm. next minute they're the like the most supportive, like wonderful yeah. person. I feel like my sister and I are pretty chill like most of the time. But um, but maybe it's more of like a sibling relationship where she's just like yeah. kind of a shithead half of the time. But they know that it like goes deeper than that. I don't really yeah. know. I guess it's not my job to understand it, but it definitely does not come off well to us. I agree. But I think what sealed the deal for me with Raquel was their conversation in Paris or London or whatever it was at the breakfast table. Do you remember that scene? <gasps> yes, but remind me kind of like what it was. Because I forgot the specifics. Maybe I have it was, notes about it. It but. was basically Selena saying how she is so tired after coming from Kenya oh, yes. and doing press in London and then going to Paris and like you could see the press tours that she were she was going on mm-hmm. you could see her reactions after the press tours of just like how the interviewers were like so like yes in um they were so what's the word am I looking for inconsiderate and the questions yes. were so dumb like and when she, she was, said the thing like I want to do philanthropy and she said yeah. thanks bye like yeah. and I was like are you kidding she's like I really felt like she heard what I was trying to say like exactly Ugh. yeah no and so like after all of that they're at this breakfast table and Selena was like oh my goodness like I'm so tired Raquel has the fucking audacity to be like like basically saying like stop complaining about your job and Selena was like, Raquel, I am not complaining about my job. I am just saying that I am so tired and I need more sleep. And then Raquel, I don't know what the heck she said. She, she keeps kinda, pushing back. I know. She kind of like backtracked a little, but then didn't at all either. She's like, okay, yes, I understand that. But I'm not, but I'm saying that like you have, you don't have to da 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 And I was just like, at that point, I like zoned out. Cause I was like, Raquel, I don't she care what you so, say. Also, who doesn't complain about their job sometimes? Yes. It's uh, not such a foreign concept for someone to complain about their job. And just because you complain sometimes doesn't mean you're not grateful. Doesn't yes. Doesn't mean you don't like your job. Doesn't mean you're not willing to do what you need to do for that job. Like, that doesn't mean anything. People are allowed the space to complain yes. sometimes. Exactly. And it signaled to me that, like, Raquel was, like, bitter or something yeah. about, like, what Selena's doing or the attention or something like that. Because it's like, why would you question her like that? Literally. That's so weird. It was so weird and so yeah. rude. I was like, I, know. Uh, I agree. That was kind of the the straw for me. Yep. Yep. Then I feel like a ton of time elapsed where we didn't hear a lot. Like we got a little bit about her like being sick. Um, Like we got some like insight into that. I thought it was yep. interesting that Francia Raisa really wasn't in the documentary a lot. Uh-huh. Um, because then yep. Selena said in another interview, she's like, Taylor Swift is basically my only industry friend. And then Francia yeah. was like, interesting. And like, so I don't know what's going on with that friendship. Yeah. But like, I also know that Selena's had parties recently where Francia was there. And so it's like, I'm just very curious what the status of that relationship is and also why they didn't highlight that. Because giving a kidney to someone is no small I know. thing. So, like, even if something has changed between them, it's, like, it felt like an important piece that was missing. Yeah, and see, that's where, like, uh, my conflict comes in with this documentary, where it's, like, Mm. that was a huge thing that everyone Mm. knew about, um, that she addressed on her Instagram and stuff. It's, like, that was such Mm -hmm. a huge thing. But then you didn't say it or talk about it in the documentary. But then I'm like, okay, well, it's your documentary and it's your boundaries. Like, I respect what you want to talk about. But it also feels like such a big thing to leave out. So that's where I kind of feel like a little disjointed where I was like, I'm not. Yeah. You know, I I guess I'm not really sure because although it doesn't, it doesn't 
uh, directly affect her mental health struggles, it's still like a very big part of her life because then you see yeah. her struggling with her um, her joints where she's like in, in like huge pain. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just felt it was like really weird for me. But again, maybe that's her protecting her privacy about something she didn't like. We don't know, exactly. but I agree. It felt it felt disjointed at that point. Yep. It yes. felt like there was something missing mm-hmm. when she was talking to the doctor on like the Zoom call about mental health. Um, yes. And then I'm just going to read my note. Yeah, it said and he said service is how we feel value and it doesn't have to be big. It can be as simple as truly listening to someone that brings the kindness into the world. Human connection is when we're at our best, which is our like biggest place of like fulfillment. And I just thought that was really cool because yeah. like that is the thing, like as much as we can be on our own, as much as we can do whatever, and that's good and that's fine. And we need to be OK with ourselves, like connection with like other people is like the most beautiful thing of like human existence right yeah it's like that that's what it's about we're social creatures like we don't do well alone and so i Mm -hmm. i totally understand that and it's like why people love the holidays to get together and do all these like fun activities it's like i i understand how that can alleviate a lot of um a lot of the pain that some people may feel Mm -hmm. and then she did say a quote at one point i think it was right after that interview when she said the essential part is knowing what to do and recognizing that and that was in relation to like dealing with mental health which um which i agree with to a point Mm -hmm. i think with certain mental health diagnoses or certain struggles yes like knowing what to do is key and knowing how to best handle that is important but i also think like it's interesting because I wonder like what theoretical orientation her like therapists or like her people have because yeah. there's other kinds of therapies like ACT therapy, right? Like that's like acceptance and commitment therapy, right? It's like, okay, are you like, and that's more about accepting what comes in like feeling those feelings and kind of like just like going through them. So it's less about knowing what to do and like how to like deal with it and accept that. So it's yes. like there's different ways to go about it. So like, knowing what to do and like that doesn't work for everybody's mental illness right yeah like so i agree with her but there's also other ways so i just felt the need to say that and that's not like a critique towards mm-hmm. that i'm just like saying that because that got brought to mind when i yeah, heard that definitely i will say the last thing that i have to add is that i loved hearing her song at the end um mm-hmm. and how she was talking about how she didn't know that like journal entries could just be a song yeah. like she's never sung like wrote written a song like that and so i think kind of hearing that and her putting it together and that being the last song we heard was really cool again poetry like i feel Mm -hmm. like this documentary was put together so well even Mm -hmm. though in some moments it did feel like it glazed over some of the big events that we all know of but like Mm -hmm. it was just so like gorgeous the way that it was put together it really was like yeah. I I honestly like overall really enjoyed it because like yeah. you said it felt like poetry yeah. it felt complete it felt it felt like it was what she wanted it to be and at the mm-hmm. end of the day that's what matters exactly and, like, I think yeah and I think that's really cool and I've been listening to her song quite a bit and I really like it um yes. and I think because it's just like her inner workings like her thoughts like it's very relatable to people who deal with stuff you yeah. know yeah yeah so selena what is our episode next week since we just got done talking about the documentary yes next week (laughs) the only had the brilliant idea (laughs) of talking about topics or things that we do not understand so we're gonna bring a list and we're gonna we're gonna chat about them and why we don't understand them no literally um and i've seen a few people do this on tiktok and it's hilarious every single time so if we end up finding some people on tiktok who also don't don't understand our things we'll be sure to give them the cred yeah um but there are a lot of things i don't understand in this world and maybe it's because i'm stupid or maybe it's because the world doesn't make sense yeah but if you want to hear us talk about it tune in next week and we'll see you then what am i supposed to say yeah that's it bye bye (laughs) 